tonight's episode of After Dark. Tension is rising between Sean and Tina while everyone else is fast asleep. What will happen next within this pitch dark bedroom beyond the midnight hour? Let's turn in to part two of Secrets Within My Household. herself on proceeding before things escalate into a whole new dimension. The loud countdown of my neighbors bringing in the new year damn near spoiled it all for me. Subsequently, Tina's eyes still haven't cracked open one inch, but the crack of her humongous ass is now fully exposed before my lustful eyes, daring me to draw closer to kiss it. Up for the challenge, I'm slowly easing my face towards Tina's territory, not in an anxious manner to wake her, but deliberately decelerate enough to reach my destination without a lot of movement. This time around, instead of adjusting her five inch frame into an entirely different position, Tina has decided to just remain in place. Heart beating a mile a minute, overwhelmed by the fact that I've successfully invaded Tina's space without any confrontation. I'm going in for the kill. My face is buried deeply in Tina's ass. Her soft succulent legs are bridged over the top of my head in a resting position. Preventing my cover from being blown, I reached up to pull the sheets and blanket over my head, leaving just enough space open for me to be able to breathe. By me doing this, it did cause Tina to slightly move a bit. Her position still hasn't changed a bit, but her moan for my uncle has just became evident. Maybe Tina thinks that she's home at her house in her bed with Uncle Kevin, and she's unaware that it's not Uncle Kevin's time that's in her butt right now, making her purr like the sexy kitten that she is. But instead, it's me that's enjoying every second of this rare moment. Or maybe it's like I said at first. Tina knows what's going on and is playing possum just to see how far this can go. If this is the case, an acting performance on Tina's behalf, someone needs to sign her ass to a lucrative deal immediately, the way that she has me convinced tonight that she's fast asleep. Anyway, there she goes again, moaning for my uncle. At the present moment, my long tongue isn't even in motion. Yeah, my face is still planted firmly in the crack of Tina's ass, but I'm landing still as a bump on the log. Tina, however, has just rocked her big booty away from her face and has turned back over on her left side to face me. We're still positioned head to foot, or should I say, vagina to penis, to be more precise. No, I'm not in a position to slide my rock hard horse penis up into Tina's well and vagina. What I meant by sleeping vagina to penis is, Tina's face is a few inches shy of my crouch, while her perfectly trimmed genitalia is close enough for me to hear her whisper in my name even more so than I ass was doing a few minutes ago. Hmm. Maybe if I slide over a little bit, Tina will be willing to taste them. It's what I just quietly thought to myself as I'm blindly surveying in the dark the distance it'll take in order for Tina's pretty lips to introduce themselves to my third leg. If I was to find out the answer to this question of mine, it wasn't going to be answered just yet. Right when Tina appeared to be on the verge of giving my lengthy shaft a long kiss goodnight, I immediately heard the screeching sound of a door opening, which caused me to nervously cross my fingers on both hands, hoping and praying that no one was about to enter this guest room to intervene. I 
flat out forgot to lock the door back when I came back in here earlier. But the weight of the footsteps being taken as it's echoing throughout the hallway makes it obvious to me that it's a little kid that's awake. Please don't let little Mitch come running down the hallway crying for his mommy. If he does, I might as well get my ass up out of this bed right now because I know Tina will if she hears her two-year-old son crying for her. Fortunate for me, temporarily anyway, little Mitch appears to be a big boy tonight. He hasn't called out his mommy's name yet and the flush of the toilet means he handled his business on his own and is heading back to bed now. I wish my dad would have taken him to the bathroom before they went in the room with him earlier tonight. If Kevin Jr. happens to get up to go to the bathroom as well, he might not be in the same mood to be a big boy like his big brother is by going to the bathroom by himself. Now that the coast appears to be clear again, no sounds of anyone lingering outside of my guest room's door. I'm refocusing my attention back on my late night task at hand. I'm not sure if my confidence has all of a sudden been boosted, or is the mere fact that I'm fully aware that it won't be much longer until daylight eventually takes over the darkness. But whatever it is, it's caused me to lay down this time on my pillow with my lips right up against Tina's berry-flavored pussy lips. Honestly speaking, I'm at the point now where it's though, even if Tina was to wake up, I really wouldn't give a fuck. My rapid tongue is aggressively lashing across her cream-filled clitoris, causing her to drunkenly receive my raging hot penis in her mouth, as if it's Uncle Kevin's. Tina's head doesn't have any bobbing motion to it at the moment. She's lovingly holding a decent portion of my bulging shaft in her mouth, but is choosing to treat him like a pacifier. Still, no complaints from me though. I was totally tuned in to Tina's deep sleep tongue action until I heard a car pull up in my driveway. 